Hey folks, so first off, I want to apologize for any background noise. I've got a neighbor shooting off fireworks just a, a few yards off my back property line. So you might hear that in the background. So I want to apologize for that first off. Second, I've got something I want to talk about here, but uh, this is going to be a lengthy article, so I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm just going to hit a few things in this article. The full article is going to be down below. Uh, like always, the link's going to be down below. This, When I printed it off, I didn't expect it to be that long. It was 14 pages long. So again, in the interest of keeping this video short, I'm just going to hit on a few things on it. But anyway, this, this article comes from CNBC. Stocks fall to end Wall Street's worst year since 2008. S&P 500 finishes 2022 down nearly 20%. All right, so it's going to go over this. The next part of this, is it gives the market stats for the Dow, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ composite, the Russell 2000, and it breaks it down for each of those, whether it's down or up for the year, quarter, month, and even week. Um, I'm not going to worry about all of that. I'm just going to cover uh, what, it, uh, what each of these is down for for the year. So final market stats for 2022. Friday was the final trading day of 2022, but also for the quarter, month, and the year. Uh, here's how the mar I can't talk. Here's how the major market averages fared over those time frames. Again, I'm only going to cover one of the four for each of these. The Dow finished down 8.78% for the year. The S&P finished uh, S&P 500 finished down 19.44% for the year. The NASDAQ composite down 33.10% for the year. And the Russell 2000 small caps down 21.56 for the year. Stocks closed well off their lows of the session on Friday, but the major averages still finished in the red. Uh, so what that means, you know, the stocks bounced back up, but it's still well within the red. The Dow lost about 74 points, while the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ composite sank 0.25% and 0.11% respectively. With one hour left in the trading year, the Dow is down 295 points, while the NASDAQ and S&P 500 are off by 1% each. The 10-year Treasury yield finishes the year below 4%. It it had come up to 4.3% after uh, from 1.5 at the beginning of the year. So it shot way up, but it did come down a little bit. A lot of people are looking at that as being optimistic for the market. I'm going to tell you, you don't need to be optimistic. Uh, it's because there's a lot of manipulation going on here. Stocks extend losses in afternoon trading. Heavyweight stocks like... Uh, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Caterpillar, and Citigroup are all showing modest losses for the day. Bank of Japan is reportedly considering hiking its inflation forecast in January, according to the Nikkei Index. Uh, reportedly considering boosting its inflation forecast in January to reflect price growth that's closer to its 2% target in the 2024 fiscal year. Uh, and this comes after... This report arrives more than a week after the Bank of Japan changed its bond yield controls. Aerospace and defense stocks on pace for a year of gains. That's not really surprising, specifically with uh, the defense stocks and the recent uh, um, war in Ukraine that's still going on and the ratcheting up of tensions between the U.S. and North Korea and South Korea and North Korea, the tensions with China over Taiwan, you know, it's it's just a mess all over. And so it's not a surprise that the defense industry is doing well. Uh, Europe closes out worst year since 2018. Uh, the Pan-European Stock 600 Index closed the year with a 12.76% loss. In the UK, the FTSE 100 managed to ring out an annual gain of about 1%. But the domestic-focused FTSE 250 sank 19.5% for its worst year since 2008. Uh, 
a lot of people are expecting uh, stocks to be bullish next year. So in other words, for those that are not familiar, for there to be a lot of support for and a lot of gain upwards for stocks. But I would say that based on my reading, that there's even more people that are predicting a deep recession next year. And again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I would argue that we're already in a deep recession, possibly even in the beginning stages of a deep depression. Uh, so what we've heard over the past year um, is that Biden's done great things for the economy. The economy's doing the best it's ever been in, in several years. And inflation's not a problem. We're not going to endure a recession. We're going to have a great year next year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let's look back at what they've said over the, over the past year. First, they came out with this, there's not going to be any in inflation. We won't have any inflation. Then we had inflation. And then they had to walk that back because inflation started going straight up. They had to walk that back and say, well, it's only going to be transitory. It's only going to be temporary. It's going to go up and then come right back down. At first, they were saying it's only going to last a month or two. Well, it didn't. It drug out for several months. Finally, when it was obvious that it wasn't coming back down, then they said, well, this is a problem. We need to start uh, hiking rates to bring it under control. So we've gone on a, the Fed has gone on a binge this year of raising high uh, interest rates uh, six or seven times this year, trying to bring it under control, and it's still not under control. It's come down a little bit, just a little bit, but not much. And now they're, they're getting a little wishy-washy trying to say, well, we're going to go in for a soft landing. We might not raise it as much later on, but we're still going to raise it because we have to get this inflation under control. What we've seen is that the, the Fed and this administration has continually made claims that weren't true, that they've had to later on walk back or completely change. And we're hearing all of this talk from several different uh, talking heads on TV of how great the economy is going to do next year. We're going to have a great year next year. Everything's going to be okay. Uh, we're not going to have a recession, whatever. And again, I believe we're already in one. Uh, already on the verge of a, a great, another Great Depression. They're saying we're not. But then I look at all of these other uh, people talking, all of these other investors and hedge fund managers and uh, financial advisors and what have you. Everybody is talking about we're going to have a recession. And it's not a matter of if. We are going to have one and it's going to be bad. Investors and financial advisors, they're not always right. I'll grant you that. But we have to understand that the government manipulates money and numbers so that they can make things seem better than what they actually are. They don't want to create a panic because uh, that wouldn't be good for them, particularly when we were dealing with election cycles, and which is, we just came out of a midterm election cycle. So they've got to tone everything down so that they can play it however they want to to get whatever they want out of the election. Uh, now that that's over, we're gonna have, we've got two years before the presidential election. So we're going to have a rough ride between now and then because I believe, it's my belief, and again, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not an economic expert by any means, but it's my belief that the downward trend we've seen over this past year, year and a half, that's going to continue into 2023 and beyond. We're going. It's not only going to continue, I honestly believe it's going to be worse. 
Uh, so what do we do? Well, like any good investor, any good financial advisor will tell you, you need to diversify to protect yourself from risks. Now, when they talk about diversifying, they're talking about not having your money in one company or in one sector, but spreading it out in multiple areas so that if one area goes bad, you've still got the other uh, investments to help prop you up so you don't lose out as bad. You don't lose as much money. I believe, and a lot of other preppers believe, that you should do the same with your money. If you want to invest in the uh, stock market, that's on you. That That's all, all dependent on you. That's a personal choice you have to make. I'll be honest, I have a little bit of money in the stock market, but it's probably less than uh, 1% of my money. I don't have much there at all. And I do have a little bit there simply because I want dividends coming in, earning me money. Not that I expect any kind of growth out of the, the stocks. So I have my money what little bit I do have in the stock market. And again, it's it's not very much at all. I have it very strategically placed. Uh, the other areas I have my money, I have some in cash. I have a little bit in my bank account. Again, not much. Just enough to cover my bills and anything I need to make a quick payment for online. Uh, I have, like several preppers, I have some in silver. Um, again, is that's a small portion of my money. The bulk of my money is not either, it's not in the stock market, it's not in the bank account, it's not in silver, and it's not really even in cash, although cash makes up a bigger portion than the previous three. Uh, the biggest portion of my money is in my preps. Food, water, ways of defending myself and my family. Um, backup systems like water purification systems, a generator and fuel to, uh, to back up my, my needs in the event of a power outage or rolling blackouts or what have you. These are things that I've got the bulk of my money in. Uh, and again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to do because it, what you do with your money is highly dependent on you and your lifestyle and your situation. Nobody can tell you what to do with your money, but my money is spread out primarily in food. That's the bulk of my money. Water, power systems, water filtration and collection systems that I'm working on. Uh, defense items. And other gear that's that I might need for either defending myself or producing food, tools and stuff that I need for that. Because tools are invaluable for doing certain things. And those are tangible items that they produce benefit for me on almost a daily basis, depending on how often I use them. Again, the smallest amount portions of my money are in primarily cash, some silver, very few uh, investments because I still want to try to grow some of my money while I can. And that's what I would advise for you to not have all of your money in investments, not have all of your money in a bank account, not have all of your money in a uh, savings account or a 401k, uh, and not ha definitely not have all your money in silver either because if one item crashes or becomes, f for whatever reason, something ca causes silver to, be, to lose its value for whatever reason, it's not likely, but it could happen, I don't want all my money stuck in silver. Uh, I don't want all my money in investments in case the stock market crashes all the way down to the bottom. Uh, I don't want all my money in the bank account because we've seen over the past year that multiple times the government has said, well, you can't have your money out unless you explain to us why you, you, want, you need your money. 
I've heard so many people talk about they went to their bank to get out four or five thousand uh, dollars or to do something on their home or to put down on a car or what have you. And the bank demanded uh, evidence of why they needed their money or in some cases demanded not only why they needed their money, but where their money originated, originated in the first place. And I don't believe you should have any more money in your bank account than what you need to pay your bills. The rest of it, you need to have in a safe at home so that you don't have to answer to anybody if you want to go in there and get a few dollars out of it. You shouldn't have to answer to anybody uh, to, to withdraw some of your money. And we've seen too frequently that that's the case that's going on now. We've seen instances where people were told they can't have their money or they can only have X amount of dollars or a, a tiny percentage of their money, and that's all they're allowed to have right now. We've seen instances in Canada uh, with the truckers' protests where people weren't allowed access to their money at all. Uh, where their accounts were completely frozen. And that's one thing we're going to see more of in the future. The government is all about control. And they love to use banks to control people because if, if your money is in a bank, they can tell the bank, lock that account down. And then suddenly you can't buy groceries. You can't buy uh, gas for your generator or gas for your truck. You can't buy food. You can't buy water. You can't buy anything that you need. You can't pay your bills. You can't pay your mortgage. Uh, these are all things. These are all examples of why you don't need to have all your money in a bank account. Just what you need to cover your monthly bills. Anything over that, you need to have at home. So, to me, that's the best preparation you can do for the economy coming up this next year. And this is, a lot of this is just me repeating myself because it's always the same things. You want to have food. That food, if you don't have an emergency savings, if you don't have silver, uh, if you don't have a stack of guns in a gun safe or what have you, uh, if you don't have solar panels and generators and stuff like that, that doesn't matter. Um, if you don't have food, it doesn't matter if you've got all this other stuff. Food has to be your number one priority. Do not put money in silver or a whole bunch of other stuff or guns, ammo, what have you, unless you've got at least, at least three months worth of food uh, stocked up. Food should be your first priority above everything. Water, power and water backup systems, rain, uh, rain catchment if you have to, or have a, a huge water tank hooked up to your well or or system somehow so that if your water gets cut off, you've got a big, uh, a big tank that you can have access to. These are the things that need to take priority. Firearms for protection are important, but they are less important than food. And there's, there's a lot of debate in the prepper community over this because a lot of preppers say, well, uh, you... All this food doesn't do you any good if somebody can just come in and take it from you. True. That's very true. But a gun's not going to do you any good if you're starving to death. And all the game is wiped out from people hunting and fishing. Uh, and the stores are shut down because there's nothing's moving on the road. Those guns won't do you a dang bit of good then. So the priority, always food number one. Food and water, actually, number one. Those two are interchangeable. You can not you can go a little while without food, but you can't go that long without water. So food is right there with water. Those are the two most important preparations. Your backup systems, medical supplies, those would be next. Firearms, you know, get the basics of what you need. You don't need 20 guns. Like you see on some of these prepper shows, you don't need 20 guns in a gun cabinet and 50,000 rounds of ammunition. Uh, even if all you've got is a hunting rifle, a shotgun, and a pistol, you can get by with that. You don't have to have 20, 30 guns like some people say. So be wise about how you spread out your money. 
have it in things in places that if one area if you lose money in one area you still got it in all these other areas hold tangible assets that you can cash out and obtain money easily i've got certain tools and i've got duplicates of certain tools that if i need money i can take one of these tools to a pawn shop that's not a good idea it's never a great idea to do that but if things get bad enough, I can do that and not hurt myself. But my money, I'm diversified throughout my life, not just in my stock market or in my bank account. I've got my money and my assets spread out in multiple areas and in multiple ways. And that's what I would advise for you. Uh, I'm going to stop right here before I go into the next video because I'm trying to keep this under 30 minutes because I know a lot of people don't like these longer videos and I'm already at 20 minutes. So this is already longer than I intended. So anyway, I hope you found this useful. I appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to start working on this next video. Keep prepping, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your family and stay busy, folks. Until next time, I'll catch you later.